What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets at Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started talking about the possible trade that could be happening soon for an outfielder because all the major injuries this team has, the Mets have had over the last couple of weeks, and nothing has been this bad in a long time for this team. And before I get started talking about who is the possibility, who are the possibilities trade-wise for the Mets and how, who could be the possible trade that the Mets could do to acquire an outfielder for this Mets injury belated team. But before I get started, don't forget guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. Enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, hit on that subscribe button everybody. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Tell me what you think. Do you think these are good options for the Mets or should they go elsewhere? All right, guys. So there's a couple of guys that are on the trade block already for teams that are really not going to do anything this year, not going to make the playoffs. So they're looking to get anything they can for these guys. And there's four guys and four options the Mets could look at. And I truly believe that Sandy Olsen and the Mets could possibly pull off a trade for one of these guys. So... Who is the first guy that I will be talking about? The first guy is Joey Gallo. Now, we know Joey Gallo, right? He's a right fielder. He hits for power. Not great average. But is an interesting option since he does play right field. The Mets, at the moment, need a right fielder. Conforto's out on the IL with the hamstring injury. So, Joey Gallo, Gallo is a possibility, and we're going to look at his stats really quick for to the 2021 season so we get a better idea of what the Mets can potentially get in the left-handed batter in Joey Gallo. So, here we go right here. Joey Gallo got a .6 war, 141 at-bats, 31 hits, 7 home runs, batting 220 with 21 runs, drove in 21 RBIs, 2 stolen bases, has an OP... On base percentage of 360, slugging percentage of 390. So it's not great, obviously. But the Mets actually need power. Their slugging percentage is actually one of the worst in the league. And they haven't been hitting home runs. And the biggest problem with this team right now is that they are driving in runs somewhat, but it's not via the home run ball. And Joey Gallo will bring home run potential to this lineup. So I don't think it's a bad option for the Mets. I think it's one of the best options out of the next three plays that I'm going to be talking about. But I do think another interesting guy that we're going to be looking at right now. And Joey Gallo is an option that I think the Mets and Sandy Olsen can look at. And like I said, any of these guys that we get that you will see here shortly aren't something that you're going to have to give up a lot for. And it's also the Mets are going to have to look at the contract, how many years they're left, and situations like that. Are they arbitration eligible? We will look into that as well. Now, with Joey Gallo, there's a couple of things. He's making $6.2 million this year. So not not crazy money. Definitely can fit under the, 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 the luxury tax cap for the Mets. He will fit. He is arbitration eligible after the 2022 season or after the 2020 in the 2022 season. And that would be $21 million and $13 million with Joey Gallo that are player options. So it's it's interesting to think. Excuse me. It, 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 he's a free agent after the 23, uh, 23 season. And he, he's 27 years old. So he's not old. He's in there. He's a power guy. He's not going to hit for average. And I think he can drive and run via the home run. And the Mets need guys that can slug. Because right now, they're not doing it. And the big boys in the lineup... The Alonzo's, the Smith, and now that Conforto's injured, they're not doing the job right now. So it would be good to get some power in this lineup with Joey Gallo. So that is the first guy on the list that the Mets could trade for is the Texas Rangers right fielder, Joey Gallo. The next guy that I'm going to be talking about, and I think is it probably the second best option for this New York Mets team, is David Peralta. Now David Peralta is obviously a guy who is on the Arizona Diamondbacks, who is pretty good. He is a left fielder. And let's be honest, it's going to be hard for the Mets to move Dominic Smith unless David Peralta can play right field. I think he can play right field. 
I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue because I don't think the Mets want to move Dominic Smith since he is getting comfortable in left field. So David Peralta is another option. And I think out of all the guys that we're going to be talking about right now, I truly think that David Peralta is probably going to cost more than any of these other guys that I will be talking about today. But David Peralta is a very interesting option. And when we look at his stats for the 2021 season, they're going to look like this. So David Peralta has a .7 war, has 146 at-bats, 39 hits, 4 home runs, batting 267, 20 runs, drove in 28 RBIs, 1 stolen base, on-base percentage of 331, slugging percentage of 466, and OPS of 796. Now, David Peralta is an interesting option. Now, he he's pretty good. He's not a big-time power guy, but he's a gap-to-gap hitter who can hit in the 270s, 280s. I think he's a viable option for this Mets team, but it will cost a little bit more for Peralta. You know, he's 33 years old, but I think the Arizona Diamondbacks will be looking a little bit more in return. Just only because is that he's not costing a lot of money. He's $7.5 million this year. And in 2022, he's also gets $7.5 million as well. And he's a free agent in the 2023 season. So David Peralta is an option for the Mets. He will probably cost more than Joey Gallo and the next two guys that I will be talking about. But he is an option. And I do think the Mets could potentially, and the two big guys that I think the Mets have a better chance of getting is Joey Gallo and David Peralta. So that's the David Peralta's stats so far for the 2021 season. And when we get to the next guy, he is not probably the the he's probably the least most option that the Mets probably would go after. And that is no other than Charlie Blackman, obviously of the Colorado Rockies. Now, we know about Charlie Blackman. He's 34 years old. He's up there in age. Now, we're going to look at his stats. And the reason why I'm very skeptical about the Mets going after him, even though they tried during the offseason and years past, but right now with Charlie Blackman, he's obviously playing at Coors Field a lot. And when we look at his stats, you can show that he's, he's declining very rapidly this year. And when you see him rapidly declining offensively in Coors Field, that's signs to be alert and I don't know if the Mets are going to go that route especially with his salary that we'll be talking about in a little bit also so when we look at Charlie Blackman's stats so far in the 2021 season he has a minus point for a war 125 at bats 30 hits two home runs batting 240 14 runs scored 21 RBIs no stolen bases 336 on base percentage 344 slugging percentage and a 680 OPS now that's the reason for concern and the reason for that is because he's 34 years old, he's clearly declining, and when he's not showing the offensive numbers in Coors Field, that's when I have to worry. And with the money that he is going to be getting, which I will look at right here, he's getting $18 million this year. And he has a player option for 2022 and 23, for $21 million and $13 million. He's clearly going to opt in to those player options. I mean, because he's not going to get money on the open market if he decides to become a, a free agent. It just doesn't make sense for him. And he's probably going to opt into those two player options. So that's a lot of money to put on the books for the New York Mets with a guy who's not performing to standards, even at Coors Field. So what do you think he's going to do at City Field and outside of Coors Field? Probably much worse. So there's a guy that I just don't think that the Mets are really going to go after, even though they tried in the past. Charlie Blackman is probably the worst option for this Mets team right now. Even though he can play right field, he's still good defensively. But this Mets needs offense. And they don't have that right now. And I don't think Charlie Blackman, out of the first three, are not the best option for the New York Mets over Jolie Gallo and David Peralta. So that is the stats for Charlie Blackman and the salary salaries that he have left in his contract. The last guy that is an interesting option as well is the Baltimore Orioles outfielder, Anthony Santander. Now, I really like Anthony Santander, but he hasn't performed well this year in 2021. And it's a little alarming, but I think it's an option that the Mets could look at only because he has control, he doesn't cost a lot, and you can groom him the way you want to groom him. And that's what a lot of teams are looking at right now. And 
Anthony Santana is an interesting option. He's the youngest out of all of these guys. He's 26 years old. He's only making two. He's only making 2.1 million dollars this year, and it's clearly going to fit under the luxury tax in the Mets uh, salary cap. And it is a good option for the Mets, which is a very interesting option for the Mets, only because of his control ability, and he is young, and it's possible that he could get better over the years. Now, he is a left fielder. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. He is a right fielder, so it's another right fielder. So we've got three right fielder options that we're looking at here. But Anthony Santander, I think, is an interesting option. But when we look at his stats, you're going to probably think otherwise. And this is the stats for the 2021 season right now for Anthony Santander. He has a .1 war, 56 at-bats, 11 hits, 2 home runs, batting 196, 5 runs, 8 RBIs. On base percentage of 230, slugging percentage of 321, and OPS of 551. So you're going to say, Rob, come on, really? You're really going to try to, the Mets are going to try this guy, try to get this guy to fill holes? Yeah, because you're going to have to fill holes. And these guys aren't coming back anytime soon. Conforto's probably not going to be back right away. You got to remember, it's a hamstring. We do not know how badly this is going to, you know, linger on and we just don't know and with the other injuries just now to Kevin Pillar he might be back in a week maybe five maybe a couple of days we don't know but obviously with his fracture nose we just don't know you know he might be a little skittish going to the plate even though he's a hard nose player we just don't know but I do like Anthony Santander because I think he's better than what he's shown and between these four guys I truly like Joey Gallo and David Peralta so if the Mets go that route I'll truly like that because I don't think we're going to have to give up too much. You know, I might have to give up a low-level prospect for Joey Gallo and maybe a little higher of a prospect for David Peralta. But I do think these guys can help out even when the big guys on this Mets team come back because they are good bench options as well. And Joey Gallo is a power guy, and God knows this New York Mets team needs power in this lineup because we're not, we have one of the worst slugging percentages in the league. And that's a problem. We're not hitting a lot of home runs. We're not scoring a lot of runs. And the way this team score runs is by the via the home run. Because this team is meant to hit a lot of home runs. And it's not happening right now. And the Mets are dropping like flies. And the big, 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 big option that we're having right now, and the problems that we're having is 100% not helping with all these damn injuries that this New York Mets team are having. And we're going to go through the injuries right now. And this is the Mets injury list for just this year. Luis Guillaume, J.D. Davis, Brandon Nimmo, Jacob DeGrom, Albert Amora Jr., Michael Cofordo, Jeff McNeil, Kevin Pillar, Seth Lugo, Noah Syndergaard, Carlos Carrasco, Jose Martinez, and Dylan Batantis. In total, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 guys on the injured list just in this early season in the middle of May. That's a problem for this team. And they have to figure out ways to get someone in here who is healthy, who can perform right away and throw right into that lineup. And I think either one of these guys could help out. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Joey Gallo and David Peralta, I think, are the major finds for this Mets team that I think can really perform in this lineup right now, especially with Gallo with the power and David Peralta with the average and the gap-to-gap -gap hitting. I truly think these two guys are the best options for the New York Mets. So I would not be surprised if Sandy Olsen will go a little hard for Joey Gallo or David Peralta, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see it very, very soon, guys. So, I will be doing a video tomorrow about guys that are right now free agents. You probably know their names. Yasel Pui and Yoannis Cespedes. I will be doing a video on those two guys tomorrow and tell you the reason why I would choose one of them and the reasons for that. And another video that I will be doing is one guy that I think the Mets should trade for and it will help out at third base and the outfield. You guys probably know who it is. It's Chris Bryant. So check out those next two videos coming up in the future. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, 
hit on that like button if you enjoy all my content want to see more want to get notified when i post my videos and when i go live hit on that subscribe button everybody and let me know what you think about trade options for the new york mets when it comes to the outfield in the comments below i want to thank you guys for watching and as always let's go mets